be it time for no way. Hi guys, welcome back to the platform. Welcome to today's video. So besties, today we are heading to a video title that says we tried delicious Polish food in Krakow, Poland. Okay, I am reacting. I'm watching this video from flying, flying the nest. The nest, the nest, the nest. Yeah, I'm watching it from their YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video with me. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, like, share and comment. And uh, let's go see the food they tried. This is really traditional. Like, I feel like they haven't changed it. You ready? Also, all this here is locals. Childhood memories are coming back. Oh my gosh, these are fresh out of the oven and they're still warm. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to somewhere in Poland. We're currently on a train from Warsaw to Krakow. We're going to be spending the day because when we came to Poland, initially we didn't actually have any plans to go there. But all over Instagram, you guys were saying you cannot leave Poland without going to Krakow. So we had one day spare before we fly out. We've jumped on the train. It's about three hours. We left at about six this morning, watched the sunrise, and we should be arriving in Krakow any moment now. Already going to miss seeing this countryside. Just looking out there, you see a beautiful church. Three hours church. to come. Warsaw to Krakow. <laughs> Welcome to Krakow, everybody. We pretty much booked our tickets. They're about $25, $30. Organized first class because it's only about $6 more and you kind of have the little Harry Potter cabins. Super comfortable way in. But going Poland this has been number one so I'm kind of glad we saved it for last and when I had a little Google it looks like that this place has a lot of unique food here so I think it's gonna be a day of exploring and a day of eating what do you want coffee seed or sesame oh sesame I okay. think hi could I just get one sesame perfect okay thank, thank you. you so I don't think we can start a morning off here in Krakow without trying an yeah. obwazonki <laughs> Polish words are one of the hardest words I've ever tried to pronounce but when you come to Krakow you will notice these little blue carts all around the city like on every single corner selling these kind of round people say that they're Kra Krakowian bagels. What's they're the name so of them again? Obzwanki. <laughs> Obzwanki. Opera Zonki? Opera? Anyway we need to try it. Okay. So you could choose either poppy seed or sesame seed so I've gone for sesame seed. And they do, they feel and look like a round bagel. Do I just go for it? I think so. It's Tastes good. like a bagel. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Especially since we've just jumped off the train and of course most of the people would eat these if they're just on the way to work and mm. they're right there in convenient locations. Why do you for all this food? If they sold like little jam dips. How good would that be? Yeah. <laughs> So we currently just made our way into Market Square and this is actually the largest medieval Market Square in all of Europe. So you're definitely going to find a lot of good food, you're going to find a lot of shops, a lot of markets and also during... Something to say, I have reacted on a lot of foreign um, YouTubers, okay, and um, when they get to Poland, especially when they get to Krakow and they try that round bacon bagels yeah that around thing either someone will say either it needs sour sauce now he's saying it needs jam like if it actually needed a uh a dipping or a sauce to eat definitely the sellers will sell it right they will sell it like it's a complimentary something but since the sellers are selling just like that means it does not need any sauce it needs to be eaten that way if it needed sauce or jam or sour sauce or cheese sauce they would definitely sell it together so i will i anytime i do a reaction about this particular food uh video and they said this i feel i feel i feel kind of like why would you say that if it actually need that the owner of the person that is selling it would definitely sell it yeah so Anyway, that's my own thoughts. If you agree with that, you can do it to highlight me in the comment section. If you don't agree with that, still drop your comment in the comment section. So let's see where they're going to eat more. In our week in Poland, we've kind of just been exploring the untouched region. So it almost feels strange to hear tourists again. We heard some Aussie accents, heard some British. We
building. We found this almost place. like an octagon shape and each different Zabia window Kanka. offers a different street food option so you can just walk around and find what you want. So one of the most popular street foods here in Krakow is actually a baguette pizza. That's what I'm going to call it. Different. This actually got really popular during the communist era because it was super cheap, easy and filling. And basically anyone who had electricity and a toaster could start their own stall and make this. But I never thought that this would be a traditional street food here in Poland. This is Let's the... try it. It's uh, made up of mushrooms, cheese and then this tomato sauce on top on a gigantic... Uh. Baguette. That crunchiness is for me. Okay. Childhood memories are coming back. Oh really? <laughs> I remember when you uh, you lived in Poland. <laughs> so back in Australia at our school canteens they would serve these kind of baguette toasties or cheesies we would call it. So we would have tomato sauce and cheese on top and they'll toast it just like this and it was like a cheap option to have at an Australian school. So basically it feels like I'm back in primary school eating my uh eating my canteen lunch. Except this is like three times the size of what mm -hmm. we would get. <laughs> So good. So good. Try it. It's something so basic, but it's so yummy. But that's that the best food though, is basic oh. food. Yeah, the crunchy for me. This is like soft, crunchy, <laughs> and with the tomato sauce it still works. Childhood? Okay. Yeah, childhood. <laughs> Perfect. And cheap as well. So if you guys have been following us for a while now, you'll know that we love trying donuts around the world. <laughs> And especially this year, we've tried some in Russia. We absolutely love the ones in Romania. And then we found out that Poland has their own version of a donut. So would we be doing you guys any justice if we didn't go and try the donuts here in Poland? Here in Poland. Oh my gosh, these are fresh out of the oven and they're still wow, warm. So Poland has been making these donuts since the 1700s. They're called Puczki. Puczki? Puczki. Puczki. And if you want to get a traditional one, you need to make sure it has rose jam filling, glazed and with orange peels on top. That is huge. But Stephen, I feel like you need to have the first bite of this Oh, one. thank you. That is a huge oh, donut. Man. Now that is a donut. I know I said I was going to give you the first bite. <laughs> hey! Mm. Yum. Whoa. Look at that filling. Oh, wow. Yum. Kind of tastes like a Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. Does it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is it because of the glaze? Mm hmm. Like a. Oh, and it's mm. jam filled. Like a rose flavored Krispy Kreme. Try it. It's meant to have the first bite. This is the third bite. <laughs> you can have the rest. Mmm. It's good, eh? Wow, it's so many different flavors because you got the orange on top of it and the rose. You got rose. my sunnies on your head, I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So out of this whole trip here in Poland, I think there's just one thing we love the most about this country and it's their love for donuts. <laughs> Wait things. for this. One time a year, they have a national holiday called Fat Thursdays. Yep, Fat Thursday where everyone pretty much eats unlimited donuts for the entire day. It's pretty much the first Thursday before Lent or before fasting. So they just <laughs> eat as many donuts and now I know when we're going to come back to Poland next time. It's for Fat Thursday. So it's later in the afternoon and we're about to catch our train back to Warsaw. But before we do, I thought it was time that we actually had like a proper lunch. because we've had a lot of like snacks and street food so it's time to have some traditional food and here in Krakow it's actually really popular to go and eat at a milk bar and these were actually created during the communist time so it was the communist party's idea on a way to feed the masses so it's a place where there's food that's cheap it's quick so workers just can come in amazing okay the donut the eggs oh my goodness it's huge and it's so damn oh, good like the way she was saying mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I like I could understand her feeling. It is something so good like that. You would think, mm hmm, mm hmm. This is quite interesting, and the crunchiness of that zapia kanka, like yo, that is oh, breathtaking. Like when you just eat it, that chica chica. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. All right, besties, let's see what they're going to be eating in the milk bar. Okay, let's see what they're going to order. Is it perugi? I don't know. Let's go see. There's food that's cheap, it's quick, so workers just can come in, pay a little bit, get a nice traditional meal, eat and leave. And of course milk bars aren't as popular now, but there's still some around. So we're going to go to one and hopefully find some good traditional Polish food. 
So you've pretty much walked into the suburbs of Krakow, so away from the main town, and I think we found the best place for lunch. It's full of locals. Full of locals? I don't even know if they're going to be able to speak English. Pierogi. As if I'm going to try pierogi. Pierogi? Maybe yes. we'll get that. Wow. One? Yeah. It took a minute. A minute. And these only cost us $2. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten dumplings for $2. That's the cheapest dumplings we've had this whole time. It looks so homemade. I actually had a little sneak inside the kitchen and it's like a bunch of these just old looking ovens with a bunch of different pots. It's like a big blue pot, a little red pot, a big white pot. Full of stuff. So we got like a Russian pioshi and then a blueberry pioshi. So they actually do sweet ones as well as savory. But these are some of our like favorite ones, but we haven't, I feel like we haven't tried such homemade ones yet. I mean, look at this. Like, I feel like every single family has had this tablecloth. I remember having this one. It's this just on like a plate that so you would have at home. Yeah, it feels such, it feels really traditional. Like, I feel like they haven't changed it. Ready? Also, all this here is locals. Mama does not best. <laughs> really? Mama does not best. <laughs> She's really oh, wow. enjoying herself. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> wow. Blueberry. These are amazing, Steve. Blueberry? They're like just miniature pies. Australia needs to get on this dumpling game because we mostly have Asian dumplings back home, but definitely not Central Eastern Russian dumplings. This is just, I could live off this. And to be honest, we've lived off this our entire Poland trip. Super authentic, super yummy, highly recommend. Music box. Okay, I don't think you're ever going to be hungry if you come to Krakow. We just found an entire wow. market, street food style, wow. of food. You can get some wine inside a wine barrel. It's beautiful. Wow. Grilled cheese with cranberry sauce. Alrighty, it's late afternoon. Had an awesome time here in Krakow. I'm so glad you guys recommended it. But our train is here. I'm going to jump back on and head back to Warsaw. In food comas. In food comas. Enjoy their stay, their short while stay in Krakow. So from Warsaw to Krakow is like three hours train trip. Let me know in the comment section. The pierogi she ate, looking at the way she was moaning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew she literally enjoyed it. And I got a feeling that it will be pierogi that they will, they will order from that milk bar. That milk bar, it's so, it looks so homey. It looks like very, very, like when you're at home. That's how I see it. All right, besties, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. This was quite unique to watch. I literally enjoyed this episode of Polish food. Let me know which other Polish food do you like me to see, and um, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Ciao, Bye, darlings.